psychological study from the National Institute of Health. Leipzig University, Germany, 1879. Professor Wilhelm Wundt experiments on the human senses. Wundt declares man's thoughts, personality, and behavior are nothing more than chemical reactions in the brain. Wundt uh, became frustrated with his inability to change behavior because he was dealing with the original, you know, psychology. That's the psyche. That's the soul. He created a new science, which was based on man being an animal without a soul to be trained, not to be a thinker, but to be trained. Students from around the world gathered to study Wundt's new definition of man as a soulless organism. The spirit of the age was summed up by German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. Gott is tot. Gott bleibt tot. Wir haben ihn umgebracht. Following Wundt's theory, a Russian, Ivan Pavlov, conducted animal experiments seeking methods to modify behavior. Pavlov studied in Wilhelm Wundt's laboratory in Leipzig, Germany, in the late 1800s. And he experimented with uh, dogs, you know, with electrodes and, and stimulus response, denying uh, privileges, to denying rewards. And he noticed that when you brought out some food in front of animals, dogs in particular, that they would begin to salivate. So he'd ring the bell at the same time that he brought the food out, and then eventually, instead of bringing the food out, he just rang the bell, and of course the, the dogs got all excited. He called that a conditioned reflex. Pavlov's first human subjects were children. He punched holes in their cheeks to collect and measure their saliva. Pavlovian conditioning became one of the major foundations of a lot of behavioral science research in the 20th century. The idea that behavior could be controlled through repetitive conditioning became known as behaviorism. The behaviorists believe that all children are animals and can be trained as animals. This was the view of, of behaviorists. As a matter of fact, John Watson, the, the most famous of the uh, behaviorists, says that you have to treat human beings or look at human beings the way you would look at the ox you slaughter. See, the behavior is not interested in what's up in your head or your soul because they don't believe there is a soul. Watson's successor, Harvard psychologist B.F. Skinner, believed all behavior could be manipulated to suit whatever ends the behavioral psychologist was seeking. Skinner developed what's called operant conditioning, where he um, was able to demonstrate you can change animal behavior by certain schedules of reinforcement by giving them rewards at certain times and then you can teach pigeons to play ping pong for example and you can teach rats to run mazes and you can teach human beings to seek certain economic or societal rewards. Skinner could actually shape new behavior patterns and this actually was the sort of thing he quite soon became very famous for. Perhaps his most notorious experiment was the Skinner box. He was uh, designing a Skinner box, which is something like a big playpen, uh, but everything in its control, the temperature's controlled, the light's controlled, and, and so on. And the idea is then you uh, present children with certain stimuli that you want them to learn to react to. For nearly a year, Skinner isolated his daughter in a box similar to those he built for rats. The child was stimulated and had to respond in a certain way, like, like, an, like a chicken or a rat in a cage because they firmly believe that children are animals. If you believe though that a, a child is a human being, you can't train him like a rat. Today, about 40 million dollars a year in taxpayer money is paid out by the United States National Institute of Mental Health for behavioral psychology research. A total of 19 billion since 1948. With these funds, psychiatrists apply the same conditioning techniques developed by Pavlov, Watson, and Skinner. Case in point, a juvenile detention center where children are hooked up to 270 volt batteries and shocked in a procedure called aversion therapy. Antoine was having a number of problems because he was up at a center that was shocking him every time he did anything. There was a button on a little, almost like a TV remote that would be used and pushed. They will get an additional shock for trying to remove the electrode. 
So they are, they're expected to sit there and let this pa electricity pass through their skin without trying to remove it. If they yell in anticipation of the shock, they will shock the students an additional time for yell. The cost to, to send a student to Judge Rottenberg from New York is about 214000 per student. These students are tortured. They're given this electric shock therapy for no other reason but to inflict pain. Other techniques include administering electric shock to treat sexual deviance, sending powerful magnetic impulses through the skull to interrupt brain activity, and shooting high voltage through surgically implanted electrodes, all to stifle problem behavior and costing up to $100,000 per patient. And while this science without a soul led to behavior modification techniques that continue to generate billions in research and treatment, it also laid the groundwork for another psychiatric movement that would cause the deaths of millions. January 1945. As World War II comes to a close, the full horror of Hitler's final solution is exposed. With grotesque killing factories unparalleled in human history, mass graves filled with corpses of men, women and children murdered by starvation, bullets and poison gas. What could drive men to commit such atrocities against their fellow human beings? <laughs> 